Clark from Thrive Physical Therapy and Wellness in Richmond, Virginia. And this is your weekly podcast designed to help improve your health, increase your success, and help you thrive in life. So it's labeled Thrive, Strive to Thrive. Good. Yeah, my name is Cody. I'm a physical therapist here at Thrive Physical Therapy. And today we're going to be talking to you a little bit about balance, what that means, and then how you can train it. So our, our big philosophy with balance, um, or basically the generalized term that we use to produce it, is typically that it means how well, and this is kind of a scientific term, but how well you can maintain your center of mass within your basic support. Right? So if you're able to control that amount of motion, and then if you're able to bring your center of mass outside of your basic support and then correct it without losing your balance, right? that's also really important. Um, so that's kind of the, the scientific term behind it. And, and to move well and not fall. It's also yeah. very important. Right? So in the general sense, we just want to make sure that you're able to, you know, move well through space, you know, stand strong, you know, change your base of support by standing on one leg or the other. And then by doing those things, hopefully you'll see that you'll have some improvement as you move along. And the way that you improve is actually pretty neat. Right? So balance is a, is a working of three to four systems. Uh, the fourth system typically being strength. We don't really use that one as conjunction as much for balance training, but it does matter. It does apply. Um, the three systems are your sensation, or your somatosensation, so that's skin proprioception, right? So that's your understanding of where you are in space based off the sensory systems and your skin and your joints. Uh, your skin and your joints are full of receptors, so those receptors show you or tell your brain where you are in space, even if your eyes are closed or even if you're under water or something like that where you have less sensation. Um, the other portion that affects this is vision. As we know, so you use visual gaze and fixation to try to set your eyes to a target that helps improve your balance. Um, that's the reason why balancing with your eyes closed is more difficult. Right. And the other thing would be the vestibular system. The vestibular system is kind of a complex system of canals in your ears that circulate fluid, and that fluid helps tell your brain where vertical orientation is. So if I tip my head to the left, your, your fluid in your ears will shift, and that tells your brain where your head is in space, and that helps orient your balance as well. So those three systems communicate, um, and they all help collaborate to make sure that you feel balanced when you're sitting up tall, right? Now, if one of those systems is damaged or impaired, such as your vision, the other systems tend to compensate to help out, or you have a balance deficit as well. So we, we kind of see that physical therapy, and so a lot of time when our goal is with balance is to determine which of those three systems or the fourth system, if strength is really an issue, um, that we're trying to address to help you feel best or make you the safer. So what, just what's a, what's a quick test that somebody could get some kind of idea on how their balance is? Yeah, so, yeah, so there's actually a pretty specified test that people use um, in balance clinics a lot of times. It's actually called the foam dome. That's a yeah. fancy term. It's the modified cat sib. Okay. It's an acronym. <laughs> don't ask me what it stands for at this point. I don't remember. Um, but basically what that means is there's a couple different balance tests. So the first one's pretty simple. You just stand with your feet together on a flat piece of ground, right? So a flat surface, feet together, eyes open, um, and you just see how your balance is. If you have trouble with this, it's kind of a lower level balance challenge. You need to work on all three systems, right? All three systems need to be upgraded. If you then stand on, say, an unstable surface like a foam pad, there's the next level of the test. And that's extra difficult compared to the last test. That shows you that your you know, proprioception and your instability in your feet can be kind of acquiring that because your eyes are still open, that creates an issue. Do the same test with your eyes closed. Now you're strictly, basically, you've impaired the other two systems. You made it more difficult. Um, if you can still stay balanced, that means your vestibular system is working really well. And it's keeping you upright even when your other systems are working you know, less than optimally. Um, the way we typically use that, we can use that very diagnostically to figure out what balance system is most impaired. But we can also, you can do that at home safely <laughs> by keeping near a counter or a wall, making sure you don't fall. But you can kind of see where your deficits lie. A lot of people report back to us saying that, oh, when I get up in the, in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, I feel like I'm off balance, right? Well, that's a big test that your, your vision system is your primary balance system that you rely on. So if you rely on your vision, that means you have to start trying to build up the other two systems that we use to make sure that you feel comfortable even when the lights are on. Yeah. And from a physical therapy standpoint, one of the things that is really, really important is when people lose confidence in their balance, uh, either because they've fallen. Uh, first off, that's a dangerous situation. It's, it's, I mean, uh, uh, falling and fracturing a hip or a pelvis or something like that is unfortunately not all that hugely uncommon. 
And statistically, people don't always do really well after that. Uh, so from a therapy standpoint, we don't want anybody taking a fall and having an injury. Uh, the other thing is, is when people do have a fall or they, their balance is impaired some way, is we start to notice that people are very much more tentative in how they walk. They tend to go to a wider base, and they tend to just move a whole lot less often uh, and with a whole lot less confidence. Uh, that doesn't has to, does not have to happen. Balance is beautifully, responds beautifully from what mm -hmm. my experience is. Absolutely, uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing about people always say, oh, I have bad balance, right? Well, I just have terrible balance. It's, like, it's a skill. You, know, you have to train it just like you would not lift a 400-pound barbell if you hadn't got under a squat rack in a while, right? So it's, um, it's something that you have to develop, something you work toward, and it does respond really well to training. In fact, I would argue that balance tends to respond much quicker than muscular training, strength training, or just especially speed-based training or agility training. Um, this, since it's a primarily a neuromuscular driven, and it's a coordination of three different systems, by just performing balanced tasks that make things difficult, you tend to have a pretty sharp increase in your balance skill over a short period of time. We typically expect you to have some improvement within even maybe the course of a session, you may see, you'll start to see improvement just based off practice, right? Um, but you may see permanent changes within one or two weeks, which is fantastic, you know, from a training principles. Yeah, and, and what, what we try to encourage people to do is, is do little bits of their exercises frequently. Uh, you, using it, rather than, you know, you, the, the, the more frequent that you can do it and the more often that you can do it in small amounts, people tend to respond really, really well. Uh, rather than doing one long session or, or skipping a few days in between, it's better for you to do it fairly regularly. Um, and, and, and the key is just to try to get back to where people are fairly confident. It's, it's easy to, to, to kind of train it. Like one, two fairly easy tests that we do in the office is, and you can do this at home fairly easily, is stand near a counter and then try standing on one foot. Like how, how hard is it for you just to purely maintain your balance on one foot? Uh, and then also, can you do if you can do that fairly well, can you maintain two feet together and close your eyes? And then if you are able to do that, can you stand on one foot and close your eyes? Those are some couple of just super easy, you know, fairly fairly easy tests that can that can be done that, that can be changed. And it can be as simple as, as you know, working on standing on one foot and brushing your teeth. Like there's there's ways to kind of integrate it into your your daily activity, your daily life. So. Well, when it comes to balance, like what, so if you're looking at someone who's trying to progress, you know, or they're trying to make balance improvements throughout time, I mean, principles that usually suggest whether it be like difficulty or duration or anything that kind of you, you shoot for, you try to, to try to strive for. Uh, absolutely. So, so a couple things is trying to identify where some of the problem areas lie, right? Like, so, so say someone's is relying very heavily on their, their vision for maintaining their balance and maybe inner ear doesn't work so well or they have trouble maintaining it when they start to take you know, vision away. Uh, so what you do is you try to put someone in a fairly safe environment. It, it's, it's important that what when you are training balance that it is difficult but that you're achieving success. So in other words, easy example would be starting to work on trying to stand on one foot. Well, if, if you can't stand on one foot and you're wobbling all over the place, um, that, and you can't maintain it at all, well, that's not where you start. You want to you make it a little bit easier so it's still a challenge, but you're able to do it fairly effectively. So in other words, for this example, one foot and maybe put a, a toe down. So you're, you've got sort of two points of contact where maybe that's a little more difficult, but you can maintain it fairly well um, with some effort that's more the right place. So you don't want to try to blow past someone's level of difficulty. If somebody can't maintain their balance at all with eyes closed, well, then that's not also not where you start. So we want people to be safe. Well, that also brings us back to how our brain learns, right? So you're, it's, a, it's a developmental brain task that your the balance is. It's minute changes in weight shift. It's minute changes in, in joint position. It's very small, right, movement that we're trying to acquire. Right? Large movements tend to cross greater levels of change in your center of mass. It's harder to control. Um, so if we're trying to get our brain to develop these fine-tuned mechanics, it takes your brain to work. And to get your brain to work, you have to set the difficulty to a certain standard. Yeah. You won't learn much by reading a child's book if you're at a you know, high, high reading level. And same thing, if I, tried, if I tried to personally read a book about neurophysics, or not neurophysics, but like rocket engineering, I wouldn't really understand it very well. And that'd be way above my scope. So I wouldn't learn a lot because it's just too hard. So... Your brain learns the same thing as it does educationally as it does from a physical standpoint. You have to put the standard at a height as a rate that's 
difficult. You have to work to actually achieve results, but it shouldn't be so hard that you just fail repeatedly. That's your brain won't learn much from that. So, um, and that's really that's a great principle for everything, let alone about true. <laughs> very, very true. So, what's a simple, easy exercise that you like? I know one of mine is favorite is where you just kind of find center and mm -hmm. practice easy weight ankle, 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 ankle strategies. Like what, what's your favorite? Yeah. Um, so. Here at Thrive, we do employ a couple different techniques. I mean, when you're first starting balance, I think the best thing is just being aware of your own limitations and understanding where your deficits lie. So, um, the start kind of mentioned finding a point, close your eyes, you know, hands close to something you can grab onto or hovering just above the countertop. And then just try to find equilibrium between the middle of your feet. So, I try to say, can I find the center of my feet between my heels and my toes? And the outside edges and the inside edges of my feet. If I can do that and try to maintain that position as long as I keep, surprise how hard it is. Um, and that's a great place to start. And then you can do the same thing with a little bit of movement. So I usually like to incorporate reaches or counter slides if you're on the, on the kitchen counter. So change your base of support. So reach away and then reach to the other side and feel your weight shift and feel how that centers your feet, how you're going to have to readjust your body mass to kind of keep upright. The other thing that we use a lot here, which I think is a higher level task, but extremely functional and I think is, a, is my favorite way to challenge balance is through two by four balance beam walking. So we use um, two by fours, preferably flat two by fours to start. But uh, yeah, yeah. two by fours is a way to is a way to challenge balance in a functional, dynamic way. So it's a bit different between static balance and dynamic balance. Dynamic balance is um, where your center of mass is constantly moving, and you're trying to change and correct for it. Where static balance is you're trying to remain stationary, and you're trying to stop your center of mass from shifting outside your base of support. So. Center of mass is typically in my pelvis, right? So I'm trying to prevent myself from swaying. Or with dynamic balance, we're working on reaching and, and reaching a foot or dropping your center of mass low. And, um, that tends to be where people have deficits more. It's, and it also tends to help you transition into regular life tasks a lot easier and more safely. We very rarely, people very rarely fall standing still. We typically fall when we're reaching over to grab something or we're walking over a curb or we're you know, hitting an unstable path in the grass or whatever, that's when we need balance training to really kick in and save us. Um, so practicing that in a controlled environment with something functional like two by four walking or um, we have our lily pads, what we call them, but they're just foam discs, right? Um, but if you walk, you know, from those slowly in control, it tends to carry over a lot better to functional. Yeah, it tends to be a lot, it's, it's a lot of fun as well. And we have a whole host of stuff that's actually sitting like right over here. So we use it all the time, simply as the yeah, morning. Yeah, 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 so. Yeah, and the two by four that you mentioned is really wonderful because it's 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 it, it, it's an unstable surface. Ours are particularly unstable because they're warped, but but it's not very high. So if you start to lose mount, you just step off of it, so it's very safe. But also, it, it does present a pretty nice challenge, and there's all kinds of things that you can do with that. Um, I, I'm just curious because I know there's one of them that this comes up a lot, and I've seen it really really change very very nicely. But how do you help someone who tends to trip on something and fall? Like, what's one of your favorite moves there? Yeah. Um, strategy. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's, there's, I think there's two ways to, to attack that right, from a physical therapist standpoint. So you typically can do, when we're looking at stepping strategy and that's an issue, you can either try to train the practice of the, the task, mm -hmm. right? So I'm trying to work on someone's stepping strategy. You can actually have them work on taking a quick step. And one of the ways I usually do that is give people either forward or backwards pressure. So I'll have, say so they have them stand still, I'll apply pressure to the back side of their back or their front. I'll give them pressure, and then I'll take that away quickly and see how they react. Right? So if they step well, then that's a great sign. If it's lagged or delayed, then it's something you can actually give them anticipatory control for. So I can say, hey, I'm going to give you pressure, and in three seconds I'm going to let go. I want you to be prepared for that. Right? And that person can then step accordingly with the expectation that they're going to trip. Right? So if you can get someone to just get that motor pattern quicker, right? it's a reflex. But it's something that you can train to be faster if you're having difficulty with it. Um, the other thing I usually recommend is then working on control, right? So that you can do the op opposite kind of idea where you're trying to remove that quick stepping strategy and you can work to give someone more stability before they have to rely on that last resort step. Um, and that way I would say, you know, static balance on one foot and then controlled step overs. I usually set up a cone, so it's like, can I step over the cone without you know, putting all my weight on that foot? Mm -hmm. And then retract it back so it's um, stable. So I think there's two ways to approach it, depending on the person and their comfort level. You can do both. Um, but it's kind of like pretty fun to work on that. See people see people struggle, but also see them improve quickly. 
yeah, and, and that that's that's one of the things that uh, really can make a huge, huge difference with somebody. And, and part of it is getting people to be confident with use how to use their feet again and being able to step effectively. And it's a, it's a bit of a process, but it works works very, very well. It's well. nice to see it. See, I've seen it seen it work many times. So yeah, it's awesome. It's well, nice here at Thrive, it. we definitely we definitely love to address our balance impairments. We think. One, it's a very gratifying physical therapist to see that change in people quickly. Um, and it's also just, it's, it's a fun and it's a very dynamic way to challenge people. And then I think people are directly see the benefits very quickly, but they also get to enjoy the benefits as they're practicing the exercise. And as anyone who's gone through PT may know, we like direct gratification as much as everybody else. <laughs> and we like things to move along quickly as well. So, um, so I would have to say that if you have any balance issues or if you're experiencing imbalance impairments, whether that be I'm, you know, I'm having difficulty staying upright or I've had some tripping scares in the past, please come visit us. We'd love to do a balance assessment and evaluate you um, to make sure that you're staying healthy or see any physical therapist in the area if, you know, if travel is an issue for Richmond, Virginia, of course. But uh, we'd like to see you guys talk to a physical therapist, let them help you. We can teach you some helpful strategies that can help facilitate great balance reactions. And I'll tell you, as you age, balance becomes more and more challenging to upkeep. The natural, the three systems that primarily dictate balance will naturally decrease with time. Your skin becomes less sensitive. The vestibular system starts to work less as the, the fluid in your ear starts to coagulate and a little thicker. And then vision tends to go as well a little bit over time. So working on those three systems and keeping them sharp is really important, uh, especially as we tend to age and adding some kind of Routine balance practice into your weekly schedule would be widely beneficial for a large part of the population. Yeah, yeah and then have seen some pretty profound changes. So it's, so it's something that doesn't, there, there's normal things that change, but there's so many things that can be done. It doesn't, it doesn't have to get no. to, to turn to a bad situation. And we see people respond beautifully all the time, and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. To see yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. That was your Strive to Thrive podcast on balance. Um, feel free to leave us a comment if you guys have any questions or if you guys have any comments about what we talked about today. We'd love to hear from you. But otherwise, look forward to some new content coming up hopefully next week. Thanks for listening, guys. All right, thanks, have guys. A great day.